luckily for me, I work at a really good company who has a huge emphasis on putting a lot of money into our employment branding. Uh, we spend millions of dollars on our employment branding website. We actually have an entire team dedicated to doing the research to figure out what the candidate market is, what their interests are, um, where we go out to find the candidates, and we have been incorporating tools to get a better idea of what that candidate market looks like and if we're being competitive. Um, right now, the market is 75% passive. Does anybody know what a passive candidate is? I'm kind of glancing. So a yeah, passive candidate is someone that's not actively looking for a job. And so we have to reach out to them first, and we have to not only get their interest, we have to sell them on the position. So 75% of the market right now is passive. So the, the name of our company sells it in itself, but then we also have to kind of create a story. So luckily for us, our employment branding team um, has done more of a, a revamp of our entire website. We're actually the only operating company out of Nestle and Purina um, specifically that has done this. All the other operating companies are kind of doing their own thing and still going with the old format. Uh, we're considered more of a best in practice. And so the, uh, our Nestle headquarters from Switzerland are actually bringing our people from our team to kind of teach them our ways because it's just taking off and we've been recognized with awards um, every year for what we're doing. So how many of you guys are on LinkedIn? Perfect. <laughs> So there, we have partnered up with LinkedIn. We've actually sent a few of our employment branding resources out to LinkedIn conferences, and we actually had LinkedIn representatives come to us, and they really revamped our profiles for us. So with it being a candidate market, um, the myth of it is that people usually either don't have any information on there, or they just put it in a resume format, and that's it. That's all you're looking for. So we, with it being a candidate market, we really have to create a story as far as why you want to why why do you want to come work for Nestle Purina? We've been voted the best place to work. That's great, but what else about the company is going to make you want to come here? You have so many options, um, and so we have a, a team that's going out to LinkedIn to find those candidates. And so by redoing your profile, we'll really kind of give you that edge because they're typing in keywords, kind of what you guys were saying earlier in the last seminar. Uh, to pull up those profiles and they'll start going through them and reaching out to them directly. So this is a little bit of a one pager for you guys. Um, the back page really kind of gives you some questions uh, to kind of get that thought process going in terms of what sort of information that you should be putting on your profile and what sort of um, sections should look like. And then the back side of it is an example from one of our employment branding resources of what he did to his profile, and it's completely different. We've incorporated videos. Um, this works both ways. So not only are you, you're going to enter the job market at some point. So you want to set yourself up for success in order to be able to have these sources and these resources find you. And then you're also going to be posting for a job at some point in the future as well. So if I'm job searching, I'm going to go out on Glassdoor and find out about the company, and then I'm going to search you on LinkedIn and I want to know what your experience has been. With that same token, it is we've been incorporating our customers. So when I say our customers, I'm talking about the groups that I specifically support at Purina. And we have them go through this entire training, redo their profile, and then we will send them a link to the job that they are specifically recruiting for because their network is likely going to have the skill set of what we're looking for. So if we can get the word out there. They have those videos on their website already to identify the culture, the benefits of working at Purina, and then they can go to the website directly to kind of get a more in-depth view of um, everything we have to offer. So I don't know if you guys, ha I know we're supposed to save it to the end, but I don't know if you guys have any specific questions regarding LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, two questions, actually. Sure. First one is, do you, if you're looking to relocate, does Purina Care. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you want to live in a different city and you say you work in, in Greater St. Louis, how does that affect? Yeah. So um, on the top of this one pager, you'll see that there is really an, an area. Uh, most people put their job title on there. 
and you can really per personalize it. Um, if you're comfortable, maybe you're in a position where you're getting laid off, so your, your current employer already knows you're looking. Um, you can certainly say looking for a new opportunity within this specific area, or you can incorporate it somewhere down here. So that way, if I'm looking for candidates in a specific area when I'm doing a Google search and searching through LinkedIn, and I type in a specific city, it will pull at some point. Um, because we do uh, x-ray searching a lot when we're, instead of having to go through every single profile, I can search directly through LinkedIn, through Google. Type in keywords, type in cities that I'm looking for candidates, and if you have that anywhere on your profile, along with the skill set that I'm looking for, you're going to pull up my search. Okay. So. Should I make that white type of the <laughs> Yeah. And the second one, um, uh, shoot, I kind of forgot what it was now. So recruiters connect with me uh, and then I don't hear anything. Yep. I'll reach out and either I hear something or I don't. If you're a recruiter and you contact me, what but you don't follow up, is that because I'm not qualified for what you're looking for or you want to keep me keep an eye on me? It could be um, either or. Uh, that if you have your profile set up in a way that they can't view the information, um, then that could be one thing where they connect with you and then realize you might not be an exact fit. But then they could also follow up with you in the future because chances are you're going to change a job at some point. Um, and then you can feel free to reach out to them. They did reach out to you. So you can certainly send them a LinkedIn message and see, hey, thanks for connecting with me. Wanted to let you know this is what we're at in the job market. Do you guys have any potential openings? So, yep. Do you as recruiters, when you're doing your 75% sort of you know, passive looking, do you reach out via LinkedIn directly? How do you normally reach so out? It depends on the job. Um, so we have a lot of recruiters that are dedicated to our hourly folks, so they're not on LinkedIn, so we have to find a different way to find them. Um, I personally recruit for IT, HR, accounting, basically every single corporate function at our headquarters, so I use LinkedIn heavily. And then we have a group of called sourcers. I don't know if that term fits with any value, but they are actively on LinkedIn every single day reaching out and connecting with these individuals to attract them to the jobs that we're uh, recruiting for actively. Because me as a recruiter, I'm more focused on the phone interview side of things, and so I will accept invitations, but I'm not actually out there looking for these candidates unless I have some downtime. Um, whereas my sourcers, on the other hand, are out there every single day connecting and looking for ways to find their contact information to have those follow-up conversations. Because a lot of people are on LinkedIn, and they'll accept the invitation, but they're at work at the same time. So they're not actively responding to messages. So the, our sourcers are looking for contact information so they can either make that individual email or they can find their phone number and call them directly. Yep. Uh, let's say you reach out by a recruiter on LinkedIn. Yes. And you take a look at the job description or the company, and you just quite think they're interested. Yep. What's a, uh, the right way to tell them that you're not interested about burning the bridge or burning Yep. Um, so I think as long as you tell them no, uh, when they do reach out to you, we hear no a lot, um, especially with the fact that a lot of people are happy with where they're at. Um, so I, I would just be as professional as possible and just say thank you for reaching out to me. And unfortunately, I'm not actively looking for a job, but if anything changes in the future, I'll certainly follow back up with you or feel free to follow back up with you. How are, how are your sources using groups within LinkedIn? And if you're a candidate, what, what strategy should you have around groups? Yeah. So we are um, adding ourselves to user groups, so we have sourcers that are specifically responsible for each area that they're supporting. So we have sourcers for IT, we have sourcers for manufacturing, so they're targeting those groups and then they're looking through those um, the group list if they can. So if you are interested in specific areas, I would strongly encourage you to join those groups and then look through the other um, profiles and find out what information they have on their LinkedIn and incorporate it into your own because when we go back to that x-ray searching and we're typing in keywords and we're specifically searching LinkedIn, your profile is going to come up. I was going to say, I heard the more groups that you can't get, make that same person that can make it higher on their list for you to come up. I'm sorry. The more groups that you're related in, mm -hmm. it ranks yeah. you higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. In the past two years, I've gotten laid off, so I've been doing lots of interviews, and there's two 
things I'd like for you to respond to. One, I have LinkedIn, but I keep it normal, and I do not have a picture because I'm just uncomfortable with putting my picture on it. How much is that going to hurt me? And two, in all the interviews I've been doing the past two years, no one has asked me for my Facebook password, and I have the best answer. I don't do Facebook. You can do yeah. whatever you want. So tell me how these three attitudes that I have are going to keep me from not getting the job. Yeah, so not having a picture on LinkedIn is probably better than having a party picture on LinkedIn because it's <laughs> uh, So I would say not having a picture versus having a poorly picture is probably going to be a better thing than not. Um, it really doesn't make a difference to us. However, like I said, if you're using LinkedIn as if it was Facebook, if it was Facebook probably not going to follow back up with you. Um, we don't, we usually find that LinkedIn is a better resource than Facebook, so we never really find out. We can, we can find you if you really wanted to, but chances are we're going to look through LinkedIn first. And if, if you have to say, yes, I will submit to, you know, the drug test and the security check and all that other stuff, do they actually go and look at what's on your Facebook? No. <laughs> uh, I no, I think you already answered because I was, he answered part of what. I was going to ask is if you go to Facebook and they can look for anything negative, and then the other thing was with the picture in the profile, how professional is too professional, and how like putting your party with your friends picture is too unprofessional, and which should yeah. be somewhere in between. Yeah, no, um, I would definitely do just you in the picture. And I would make it a headshot. A lot more companies are doing headshots for you. Um, we did ours. Uh, we had our team come in and take all our pictures. I didn't like my picture, so I didn't use it. But it was at least an option there for me. Um, but yeah, and I wouldn't put more than one person in your picture. It just it looks more like you're tailoring it to Facebook or it's completely separate. Well, the activities and stuff too, like how much detail about activities and you know. Activities on LinkedIn. Yeah. I don't really look at the activities. I'm more interested in what you bring to the table in your your career background. So I probably leave it off there. Yes. Yeah. Do endorsements and recommendations have any bearing on recruiters using your LinkedIn? No. Um, we don't do reference checks because of the fact that you're probably only going to give a name to people that are going to speak highly of you. And chances are the endorsements that are coming on your LinkedIn profile are going to be the same type of situation. So um, we don't take those into consideration. How do you check references? We don't. Uh, we, we just do background checks and um, education checks to make okay. sure that what you put on your application is actually true. Yep. Um, on LinkedIn, in terms of connections, yep. um, are there any connections that you should avoid? Say you might be friends with someone on Facebook that you may not want to be on LinkedIn. Is there ever a time to avoid that? Because quality... Um, no, I mean, I always, I accept anyone that adds me on LinkedIn, so, I mean, unless their profile is screaming that they're not really necessarily pro, uh, professional, which happened to me for the first time last week, um, but other than that, I pretty much would accept anyone that, because you never know when you can use that connection in the future. It's fairly uncommon to have, I mean, I understand what you're talking about on Facebook, but I don't see, I don't know about you guys, but it's rare when I see a LinkedIn profile that has a, yeah, that would be really sketchy. I think it's not necessarily as important in terms of who you're connected with. Um, it may be important in terms of groups that you decide to connect with. So you might want to be cautious not to join a group of um, that is particularly extreme in their beliefs politically and so forth, or um, maybe portrays you from, you know, bring something to light that would be concerning to somebody, but um, that would be the only thing. Yeah. The extreme, the like, groups that, that portray some extreme point of view versus the individual. To follow up what she just said, um, that would also bring me to the point of watching what you like on LinkedIn. Because if I'm connected with you, I can see what you like. It's going to pop up in my newsfeed. And so if you're liking outrageous things, it's going to kind of speak a little bit of professional character. Can you filter that with your thousands of connections? Of yeah, you can liking? go into your privacy settings um, okay. and kind of detail who can see your updates um, and what you do on LinkedIn. Right, but what I'm saying, you know, on, on your new, when you get a news feed, you get all these thousands of viewer connections that are popping up, yeah. and you find just what I've liked very quickly. No, I'd have to, I'd have to go so to it your takes a on, yeah. on your side. Yeah. Okay. How are your sources using Indeed.com? Um, 
from their perspective? Yeah, so we don't use Indeed. Um, Indeed actually scrapes our job boards and posts for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have really found out that there's not very much ROI on the job boards. And so we've really kind of found that LinkedIn's our best resource and we uh, build our connections and our referrals uh, from there. And then with the X researching, we actually um, we did a two-day crash course on sourcing efforts. And so we found ways to figure out um, gathering attendee lists from conferences of user groups. So that way we can get all of the information right then and there, just doing a simple X research. And, okay. Yes. Could, could your LinkedIn profile ever like narrow your scope? Of, like, like I mean, I don't want to change jobs right now. But, yes. Like I'm an insurance agent. Sure. Like, so I'm not. I don't think anybody's gonna like try to recruit me unless they were recruiting for another somewhat insurance sales yeah. position. Um, which that's not usually people think that after like yeah. people do other jobs. But like, is that by me putting a lot of information on what I do and what I specialize in and what I do well? Does that like? Can you point me to maybe not have other people look at me for different job opportunities in the future? Yeah, I mean, chances are is that they're going to be looking at your most relevant work experience. And so if you have done that in the past, but it isn't currently what you do, then they're really only going to be targeting you for a specific insurance-related job. I mean, like, I've, I've looked at, like, it's funny that you, you work with Progressive. I have questions for you later. <laughs> um, like, working, doing other insurance-related things, just not sales positions. So, would you say that just be careful with, like, wording that you put in there and yeah. keep that as a, I would, I don't know if I want to specify your question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I would say do your research on Glassdoor.com as far as if you're looking to completely switch your career as far as where you want to go. Look on Glassdoor and maybe find a company that you're interested in and you can type in that company and you'll get every single information of maybe what the job title is, what their responsibilities have been, and you can incorporate those keywords into your LinkedIn profile so that when they're reading those searches, you'll start to come up with those searches and they can. Um, and then you can always add them on LinkedIn and, find, and ask them and say, hey, this is my background, but that's what I'm interested in doing. What can I do to get there? Carly, you have a question? Yeah, I know you can customize your um, LinkedIn URL link. Yep. Should we put that on our resume? Because I know it's already kind of like an information crunch, like what to add, what to not add. Yeah. Is that relevant, really? Or? Um, I would say it, it depends on what your resume is, because some people aren't very good resume writers. And so if I want to get more information on you, then I can okay. click on that. But I can do a simple search and type uh -huh. in your name and find you pretty quickly. Just as a hiring manager, when I get a resume and I haven't seen anything, having that link, we do use it to go and at least be able to recognize, see a face, get a little bit more feel for a person above and beyond a resume. So maybe not on the recruiting side, but definitely from a hiring manager we use it. Yeah, I look at LinkedIn too. And you know, reiterate what Melissa said earlier. I see so many profiles that have a party pick in there. And it might be a great picture of you. <laughs> but half the time it's cut off. You know, you can tell somebody else was in the picture or whatever. Uh, make sure you're using a professional headshot. Uh, Steve, you had a question. Yeah, if there's a company you know you're interested in, but you don't necessarily have a connection with, what's the appropriate way to like, direct message them? Yeah, you can add anyone. Um, I always make sure to look at their profile and see what they specialize in. So you're not sending, I can tell you, I get so many messages on LinkedIn asking me about a job where I have all the areas that I recruit for and it's nowhere near the area that I recruit for. And so, I'm probably not going to respond to a message because it would have taken me 10 to 20 seconds to just look at my profile and see what areas I specialize in, where you could go and look and find someone that actually does recruit for that area and add them and follow up with them with a direct message. Can, can I follow up with that yeah, real quick? absolutely. If one of these students contacted you, yeah, even if they're interested in something else yeah. in Purina, would you help them? Yes, I would. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Glassdoor? Oh, Glass? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on actually uploading resumes? Yeah, so if you're pretty new into the industry, and um, I think a resume upload onto your LinkedIn profile is really useful for our sourcers because we can actually see what you've done um, versus maybe you haven't really uploaded very much information on the LinkedIn or your resume. Um, or it's just an easier way for me to find you, I would definitely use that. Once you start getting into your career, I would start tailor tailoring your uploads to the company that you're working for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
shared a little bit about how you're supposed to kind of write a story about your job experience rather than bullet points like you would yep. a resume. Are your sourcers, would they actually like read through that or is it kind of like covered up where they're just going to maybe skim it and ignore it? Yeah, uh, no. How gonna, valuable is that? They're going to read it um, because, I mean, it gives them a way to kind of see what you've done and kind of what your interests are because it will help me know if I'm reaching out to you for a job that you're not even interested in. And that will save me time in the long run. So the hot spots, I guess, on the LinkedIn profile is going to be like summary, mm -hmm. your job experience, and I think you already did on like endorsements and stuff with the bottom. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? Yes, Jeff. Is there a polite way of asking if you go on an interview that the people you are going to interview with do not have English as a first language? I've run aground on that numerous times, and you talk about crash and burn. Interview. Yeah, I probably wouldn't ask that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any others? Thank you, Melissa.